Greetings once again heroes and villains, dudes days then back again with another chapter of My Hero Academia where this final war is starting to wind down. As we see all across the various battlefields, several results both seen and unseen over the course of everything. Shoji and Koda are being treated, Gang Orca and Sirius have the area where Uraka and Froppy previously were under control as well. Aoyama and Toru cut down several heroes who were trapped in those kunaide plant thingies. Ryuku, 13, and Ojiro are still taking on that one villain with the top hat or whatever. Skeptic is being escorted to prison by Yoshindo and Miss Joke. The evacuation to Shiketsu by Kuro Iro and Kamakuri is going off without any further hitches. The situation at Jaku Hospital is still pretty good, but Kurogiri, Eraserhead, and Present Mike are nowhere to be seen. I do wonder when we're gonna finally wrap that situation up. What could possibly be going on with them? A lot of time has passed, both out in the real world and in world. But in terms of the final matchup, Deku is getting desperate, knowing that he needs gear shift in order to really take down Shigaraki. But this last application of it, it just might put him down for the count. So Deku's gotta make it count. Meanwhile, a shocking battle has begun. All for one versus Dynamite. Or Explosion Murder God Dynamite, whatever. Bakugo. And All for One is trying his damnedest to ignore Bakugo, as it's a battle of those who look down as others. All for One calling Bakugo an ant, or a pebble, pebble was the word, and Bakugo calling All for One a bit player, or a filler character. But because of the intense pain going through Bakugo's body, he started to refine just how he uses his explosion quirk, managing to discover a way to increase his acceleration exponentially. So no matter what All for One does, Bakugo always catches up. And the persistence of Bakugo is really starting to get under All for One's skin. Although we know that all for One is growingly, increasingly incensed by everything going on around him. Despite as in control as he could be if he just thought a little straighter. But Bakugo, much like those who theorize that there was some kind of relationship between Bakugo and the second user of One For All, comes to the mind of All For One, the second user named Kudo. As when Deku and Bakugo linked hands for the first time in this battle, that helped to Bakugo save All Might is giving All For One flashbacks to Kudo coming to save All For One's little brother, that outstretched hand being the source of so much suffering for All For One. But what's he gonna do about it? And will All For One's growing rage continue to cause him make just enough mistakes to give the heroes the end? And can Deku make his last gear shift truly worth it? Join me as I find out, won't you? Alright, My Hero Academia, number 403, or 407, an exceptional child. I don't know where I got that three from. We pick up with a homeless woman out on the streets of what looked to be maybe China, day drinking her life away more or less. Very unfortunate scene. She got something on her arm. Narration. For about a year, the oh, sex worker had been suffering from hardened growths on her arm, on her left arm. Oh man, never thought I'd hear that term in my hero, but here we are. She wasn't even aware of her pregnancy for the first eight months, and her Unstable lifestyle wasn't the only reason for that. Mm, geez, that's kind of depressing. She simply couldn't feel what had taken up residence in her uterus and had begun sapping away at her very life form. I mean, that's one way to put it, geez. She gave birth to the twins on the riverbank before dying on the spot. Oh, and for some reason, the growths on her arm had completely vanished. This isn't the origin of All For One and his little brother, is it? The two babies were alone in the world, right around when the rats showed up to gnaw on the newborns and their mother's corpse. Gee, the flooding river swept the babies away. So is that the true origin of the very first quirk babies? That's kind of morbid, but yeah, nobody would really know about that. One year later, 
News of the glowing baby was the first of many worldwide reports of emerging meta-ability. These meta-abilities didn't only present at birth, they also started to present after the fact in young people going through puberty, much like the X-Men. One research group looking into the matter hypothesized that a novel disease was to blame, like you do. They announced that those with meta-abilities were a sub-branch of humanity with new genetic factors. Mutants, essentially the origin of the X-Men. The declaration was reckless and premature. People are social organisms, so this statement divided them and added fuel to the chaos to come. Right. Especially in a post-pandemic world? Jeez. Who knows what kind of things people said and did. Especially after we've seen what goes on during the thought of a disease outbreak, you know? I don't know why I used air quotes. It was an actual disease outbreak. You see in a ruined, burning city, people with masks. That's actually kind of cool detail. They have cloths. They have helmets and cloths that are tucked into the straps of their helmet. They're all congregated saying, seems like those meta freaks start gathering over by the industrial zone. And here you essentially have the purifiers. Again, it's essentially just X-Men. Gotta be the same ones the demon demonstrators clashed with last night. Better take them out before they can regroup and rise up. Gee, what a messed up way of talking about things. Suddenly, they're startled by someone approaching them. One of their helmets says Meta X. Okay. One of the people says, who's there? A young boy in a cloak approaches. Is this all for one? One of the people says, an exceptional child maybe? The others begin to walk away with them saying, look, I feel bad, but leave him be. Kids are more likely to be carriers. Oh, gee. Yep. Yep. The boy's eyes track the men. They begin to shine. Suddenly a sound is heard by one of the men. He turns, saying, what's that sound? As the sound goes off more, another man turns, but before any of them can respond, three of their heads pierced by a long tendril. Oh, it's Rivet Stab. Jeez, what a brutal sight. The boy just goes in, piercing through the men one after another. This was the meta ability he had stolen from his mother. Oh, oh. This explains a lot. So while the luminescent baby did, was a creature, the very first meta was none other than all for one. And considering the way of his and his brother's birth, he, and he had the ability to steal powers and the very first power he stole was these drilling tendrils from his mom. Or, I don't think it's rivet stab, it's named something else. Spear-like bones, okay, that's what it's called. So the oldest quirk is spear-like bones. And that's essentially Marrow in Marvel comic. The narration as we see the young baby clinging to the dead body of his m oh man this is kind of messed up the dead body of his mother rushing down this river the child was imbued with hubris and a disrespect from others from the moment of his birth a disrespect for others from the moment of his birth he viewed all within reach as his own possession and so you see the baby just clawing at his mother He's using the beer-like bones to produce teeth in order to, I guess, suckle at his mother's breast. Ah, oh, gee. And then he's holding his brother. God. The fact that they managed to survive. Those who wouldn't turn to look at him when he cried and screamed. Those who wouldn't provide him with anything. He viewed with utter distrust. Gee. And then you see the young all-for-one killing and stealing powers like it's nothing. Suddenly someone throws a can at him and as All For One turns his attention. Oh, it's his brother. His brother crawls out of the shadow saying, stop, don't hurt, don't. The narration says, most of the nutrients provided by their mother were stolen by the older twin, leaving the younger twin small and frail. All For One comes over and kicks his little brother. The boy's smaller sibling provided him with nothing in particular. Still, the latter was one of his possession and not one he would readily relinquish. He, holy crap. I, I gotta tell you, I wasn't expecting this. 
This is a hell of an origin. You then pick up in a dilapidated building where you can hear a report saying, Amidst the growing social divide, that original glowing baby, now grown, has taken a stand and is calling for the return to a peaceful, safe society. This leader gains more supporters day by day. Oh, did we know he became a political figure? Uh, guess it makes sense. <sighs> It, the irony, all for one born in the dark as a scavenger who does nothing but steal from one person after another. Not a very fair life in general, but still. And the luminous baby coming into the world, bright and shining, and a symbol of hope. With no one being any the wiser that they're probably around the same age, but a year apart. Now, I think they did say it was exactly a year apart, so it's probably like I was thinking before. All for one killed him and stole his quirk more than likely. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm so like this is sending like my brain in overdrive just thinking about all of this. All right, we pick up in a building dilapidated and broken down. All for one floats in, coming upon his brother reading books, comic books of all things. All for one says, "You've kept this from me. What are you reading?" His brother says, "Well, I'm still learning to read. So big fancy books are too hard, but these comics are just wow. It's like you read the pictures and they tell you the hopes and dreams of the people in the drawing, like." This hero, someday, I want to be like him. We then see All For One sit down next to his brother, looking at the comics. So this is how it starts. The narration says, The younger twin still hadn't completely given up on his older brother. In his faint memories, he recalled that hand, and wanted to believe that his brother's grip had been gentle and kind. No. I think, I think it's one of those things where you were just caught up in your brother gripping at your mother. Three years later, All For One talks to his brother saying, did you hear? Apparently the flame is glowing baby reached 10 million me supporters. His brother looks up calling out to him. All for one says weird right? I mean why them? Just because they were officially the first one in the record book. Two weeks ago in India alone. 50 babies were born with meta ability. His brother says, that glow on you. Ah, he did do it. All for one says, how they managed to rally so many people to them. Isn't it bizarre? So I killed that leader and stole what was theirs. His brother questions, what? Why? All for one tells him, remember what that comic book said? One for all, and all for one. Words to live by. Really? Really? So that's how it starts. That hero had to hide his identity and battle on in solitude, while everyone paid tribute to the wicked demon lord out of fear. Just as you were inspired, I now want a world that exists for my sake and mine alone. I found my own dream. Gee, that's chilling. All for one then remembers his brother running. He thinks, wait, why are you leaving? And after I granted you a power of your own, he remembers Kudo taking his brother by the hand. And he thinks, hey, who are you? Get away from him. That one's mine. Hey, look at me. They don't turn. They keep running. And he sees their hands interlock. All for one thinks, if you refuse to be mine, then enough of this. And all that remains of his brother, a bloody hand. A bloody hand. The hand that, the hand that Shigaraki still had, the last hand. That was it, wasn't it? The hand that all for one gave Shigaraki. There was one extra one. Yeah, all for one said it was special, didn't he? It was his brother's hand after he killed him. After all those years, he still preserved it. It's why he gave Tomura Shigaraki the hands of his family, because it was the hands that had inspired all for one to do so much. It was the hands he remembered the most. And this is wild. This is some berserk stuff, essentially. It just makes me think of guts. And I'm, I, oh, I didn't read, like, berserk. Like, read it, read it. I mostly just skim through certain parts here, because that, it just takes a certain kind of mindset to get through berserk, and oof. And it, it's essentially Guts' origin. Just a little less messed up, but like, to even be, like, just the very nature of their birth, so... Technically, they didn't even have names. Maybe he might have been able to find out what their names were through DNA tests. Maybe there was something to be traced. But they might have they might have found a family name, but technically born without names, without love. His brother tried to go down a better path because he didn't like all the killing the eldest was doing. And to find out they're not even 
that far apart. Essentially, it's just they were born at the same time, just probably like seconds apart, minutes, who knows? Because the mother died in the process. Gee, and in a fit of rage, he killed his brother. Did he even mean to? I, I'm kind of thinking no, because the way he's blaming Kudo for it, probably just a thing that happened. He was angry and he did the only thing he knew how to do when he was angry. He killed. It's probably when he started becoming more calculating, no less violent, but he thought a little bit more about how he went about things, and the idea that his brother still saw some good in him because of what was, <laughs> by all technical means, still about a selfishness, the selfishness of a baby, to cling to the first, I mean, that's instinct for a baby. Hands gripped. Well, when a baby is born, they grip. They grip at anything and anything. And it could have even been that as he grew older, it just seemed to be the natural thing to do. Take what you needed to survive. I mean, let's face it, in a world that was so brutal and terrible and terrifying, honestly, he's kind of like Hope Summers. Because in Marvel, Hope Summers was born with the ability to just steal other powers. Mostly mimic, not steal them entirely. But it's like, what if that power was more diabolical? more evil situation where this lone child had actually been able to be raised who knows what might have happened honestly curious like i feel like i could just read chapters upon chapters of just the life and times of all for one the idea that comic books were an inspiration to the two of them but from completely separate angles and who knows maybe all for one's decision to be a villain came from the fact that his brother took an interest in comic book because they say here that he didn't like not being acknowledged but yeah of course no one would really know he existed because he was born in complete anonymity literally born in the dark an existence that easily could have died the greatest source of good in the world and the greatest source of evil born literally at the same time <sighs> oh no I feel like Horikoshi, Horikoshi cooked with this one. I feel like Horikoshi cooked with this one. Eh. It feels very Zuko and Azula kind of situation. One kept choosing to be more and more of a monster. And yeah, had they been raised properly, we might have been able to avoid this. But something about the environment they were in just made them go more and more cruel as time went on. Whereas the other chose to do the right thing. Although Zuko, it took a while. But the thing is, much like with Zuko, who the faint this glimpse of something positive the heroes in that story latched on in Avatar The Last Airbender. Kudo, he saw all for one's brother, by all means, should have just ended him. Who knows, he could have been just as diabolical as his brother. But the second user of One For All saw good in the brother, and that paid off. One moment of honesty, one cry for compassion, that made the difference. Because the cry for compassion to the right kind of person who was willing to listen was able to be positive. But for someone like All For One who had gone down the dark path for too long, shoo. It would have been hard to come back from it. Even if he tried to be more positive going forward, that dark notes would still be there. It would have been a real testament if he tried to turn things around, but why would he want to? He had the power to take anything and everything and kill anyone and everyone. Simple as that. Whew, that's a lot. Let me know your thoughts on this chapter in the comment section below. How did you feel about this origin for all for one and one for all? Is it what you were expecting? Because it definitely goes far beyond anything I could have thought of. But I want to hear from you. So remember to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. And until next time, I've been Dudes Days Then. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Till then, bye bye. <laughs>